Do you like watching people suffer? Do you like watching their hardcores die over and over again just for them to buy membership and restart the account? Do you like watching people use niche mechanics that are never used in anywhere else in the game because they're so niche and so useless that only myself would ever even use them? Do you like speedruns? Do you like people having to constrain themselves to a time limit, possibly not even move, to get up from their computer to eat, take their medication, or even defecate? Okay, I feel the urge. I'm gonna do it. How much time did I waste? Do you like watching some maniac trying to maintain his combat level to as low as possible while trying to do some quest? That should literally be impossible to complete. Well then, you'll love today's video because all four of those things are part of it, as well as much, much more. If you watched my last video from just last week, I managed to use a new manip to tally other accounts off Tutorial Island to skip the ending magic XP, as well as get certain item IDs off of Tutorial Island that you otherwise should not have in the main game. But today I'm going to be using this tell the other mechanic from the node on a group Iron Man for something much much more important. And that is building a rare account with an otherwise impossible goal in mind. By doing some more research with the tell the other manip, I found even more possibilities. And this allowed for me to talk to the Iron Man tutor on a new account, switch into an Iron Man mode such as Hardcore Iron Man, and keep my accept aid on till the next time I logged in. I did this by simply changing my status while having accept aid on then clicking off of the dialogue before ending the entire chat with the Iron Man tutor. And of course, then having a tell the other account on the node like you saw in the last video in order to get me off the island invalidly. Normally when you leave the island with this accept date on through the Iron Man tutor, it'll turn it off as the wizard will teleport you out, or the boat to the group node will also turn this accept aid off. But luckily, because we found that one spare tile that had the tell the other mechanic from the group Iron Man node, we're able to leave the island invalidly, meaning that accept aid never turns off, and we're still an Iron Man. But this accept aid will turn off the next time I log out and log back in, and there's only a six hour window of game time before you're auto-logged by RuneScape. This is known as the six hour login limit. Holy moly, there's a strange man on the screen again. Keep that six hour login limit in your mind while we cut to a quick commercial break. I want to introduce you to our sponsor for today's video, Ridge. Ridge sent me this new wallet and this new key holder and I'm going to check it out real quick. I'm going to see how good they are, see if they can compare to my massive wallet here that literally breaks my spine that uh, I probably shouldn't be wearing in my back pocket, but I do. And now I can finally use something that possibly can fit in my front pocket that's much better. We're also gonna check out how much better our keys are gonna look on this thing. Okay, the wallet. The first thing I'm realizing is how compact this thing is. I love it. It's not gonna be in my back pocket for once, and it holds, I have nine cards in this thing, and it literally holds all of them. I don't wanna pull them out because you're probably gonna steal my credit card. Bam, there's my cards, buddy. I could take out whatever key I want, and the greatest thing is it literally stays put. I can just slam this thing into the door, probably don't want to actually slam it into the door. But I do have a lifetime warranty, right? I'm all about fashion. You guys know this. I'm really into the design. This this matches my my hoodie I'm wearing right now. Even look at that. Ooh. What do you have to lose? 45 day money back guarantee. Use code RENDY and go ahead and use my link in the description below to get 10% off at checkout and free shipping. So whatever goal I have for today's video is going to have to be done in less than six hours total time and I can't even get up from my seat for a few minutes. This also means I can't use Iron Man world hop mechanics such as trying to buy unlimited stock from shops. As well, accept aid turns on and off during any cutscene. Meaning if I go into any cutscene, this entire manip will be nulled and my accept aid will be turned off. Also meaning I'll have to avoid a lot of certain quests in my route to the end goal. And what is this end goal? Well, it's something that's only been done by less than a handful of players. The feud quest on a level 3 hardcore Iron Man. This used to be possible, but technically should not be possible in today's standards. I only know of one level 3 who was able to do this before on a hardcore Iron Man by using Kodai potions inside of Raids 1, then smuggling that boost out in order to make recoils. This has since been patched for many, many months, meaning there should be no alternative to do this quest on a level 3 hardcore. Why is this quest so hard you might ask and why does it need recoils or otherwise accept aid through vengeance and many other resources to do? Well, one, because the bosses inside of the feud quest only have a five minute despawn timer, meaning you need to kill these bosses extremely fast. Even if Poison Dynamite was to come out and you were able to get somehow many hits off, you would not be able to kill these bosses in time. As well, speaking of Poison Dynamite, these bosses are also immune to poison, meaning you cannot poison or venom these bosses. The only way you can kill these bosses on a level 3 hardcore is with recoils or vengeance. And because we have the accept aid feature smuggled off of Tutorial Island now, we can therefore use Vengeance Other and possibly in under 6 hours complete this entire quest. Then we can be the first level 3 hardcore Iron Man to do this quest without the need of recoils entirely. 
Many of you are likely thinking, well, the feud doesn't have that high of requirements, and it should easily be done even with these boss fights. Sure, the first boss could be done relatively easily because it only maxes sevens, and I could step in and out using heal other and vengeance accounts as fast as possible before that five minute despawn. But the second boss is where it gets tricky. The second boss, the bandit champion, maxes tens. I'm only gonna have 10 HP as a level three, meaning I'll be chancing it every time I step in front of this guy, which I really don't wanna do because I don't wanna have to bond up or membership tons of accounts just to get a slight chance of defeating this boss with vengeance and heal others. What I need is a known solid way to get past the max hit of a 10 from that second boss. And the only way I can do that on an account such as this is by utilizing Guthix Rest. Guthix Rest though have hello requirements, including Charlo Village and many stats I'll have to get up in this very short six hour period. This seemed impossible because there is so many requirements behind Guthix Rest to be able to get this from scratch in under six hours on a fresh Iron Man, especially one that can't utilize world hopping. There's so many obstacles to overcome here. This would be cutting it close, and if there wasn't for another find I later had, it would be pretty much impossible. I basically discovered I'm able to share stamina potions through the Stat Restore Pot Share, the lower tier Lunar Spellbook spell, but not on the actual Boost Share Potion spell. This is probably not intended because on the wiki itself for the Boost Share Potion spell, it strictly states that Staminas are not usable. But I found with this lower tier spell, I could share Stamina doses and therefore have Stamina Run Energy on a fresh level 3 to help boost my entire process of getting the Guthix Rest as fast as possible before the feud quest completion. As well, because I have accept aid on now, I can use Tele Others on my other accounts here and alts in order to move around the map much more quickly to complete quests. So yes, my first plan is just get Guthix Rest and defeat the feud quest all from scratch from Tutorial Island, Tele Other, in under six hours. And don't get up from my seat to use the bathroom. So you might be thinking, this really isn't Iron Man mode, you're using uh, assistance from others. Well, technically, Chessbra has retired, okay? It's just me nowadays. I'm on practically six accounts in some portions of this video, sometimes three. It's all me on alt accounts that aren't actually mine, but that I'm using, okay? So it's technically kind of a single player mode, but not really. Okay, it's probably not, but you get the gist. Anyways, who cares really about the bullshit technicalities of what should be an Iron Man? An Iron Man's an Iron Man, it still makes it difficult because I have to use all these weird insane processes. I've never done this before, so it's going to be extremely stressful to try and run through this, especially while I'm multi-logging on at least four accounts at a time, sometimes later five or six even. Right now, I'm on my group Iron Man account here, or not mine, the one that someone lent me, and I'm going to be tele-othering the other account once I make it a hardcore and do the initial manip, but not bug, okay, manip, to keep my accept aid on. So once I have that on, um, I'm going to go ahead and run it over here. And that account is membership. I cannot use bonds once again because I'm on Tutorial Island. You can't withdraw bonds from your bond pouch in Tutorial Island, even if you buy them. So I'm using membership codes. Hopefully this does not take too many attempts, though, because... This actually will be using the last of my membership codes likely because there is not many left. I'm going to try and log in now and head over to the dock. Okay, so all of these accept aid spells from the Lunar Spellbook and from Tele Others from the Standard Spellbook, they just take a lot of ruins. So I prepared my accounts with stamina potions to share, food to share whenever I heal other because heal other gives damage to my accounts, as well as the ruins for Tele Others. And there's a lot of ruins on me, as you can see. I don't know if I need three accounts because there are some cooldowns like Vengeance and whatnot, but I'm going to go ahead and just run with the three accounts for this test run. Our accounts are geared. We're now off Tutorial Island. On this notepad, there is a lot to do. I'm going to go ahead and need to thieve men to five thieving so I can steal from cake stalls because I will need 30 thieving for the feud requirement. As well, I'm going to go ahead and get a lot of supplies from general stores and from spawns like the pickaxe in the top floor of Lumbridge Castle. Then I'm going to go ahead and start X marks the spot because I will need that XP lamp later on for some smithing or possibly for some herbal or XP. All right, because I have Authenticator already set on this account, I can't actually log out and set the Authenticator. So luckily I set it before I logged in or else this would not be possible. But I'm using the one time teleport from Count Check in order to get to Barbarian Village and then run through the security stronghold for some starting cash. I'm using Heal Others and following this account with my other accounts, which is kind of hard and takes a little bit extra time, which probably means I should cut down the amount of accounts I'm using, but none of these have Dream Mentor and can't swap back to the standard spellbook to use Tele Other currently. Hopefully soon a friend will lend me an account with Dream Mentor so I can just go ahead and spellbook swap for Tele Others and cut down the amount of clients I'm trying to use and speedrun at the same time. Mm, check this out, this is pretty funny. I can't actually home teleport? because it thinks I'm still in the tutorial here, so I have to climb up out of the stronghold and 
have my other account, Lumbridge, tell the other me to get back to Lumbridge here. As well, I found out I did not need the starter cash from Security Stronghold, as on our very sophisticated notepad, Murder Mystery is enough of a reward, giving us 2k, and that's going to allow us to buy all the supplies we need for Quest and for Gothic's Rest and all of that good stuff without having to go through the Security Stronghold technically at all. We're going to go to the second floor of the Sword Shop first to get a lit candle in order to use for Shiloh Village because you have to drop it down a crevice. Then we're going to go buy a pink skirt from the Verac Clothes Shop, as well as leather gloves and leather boots. Buy three beers from the pub because we'll need those for the feud quest. And then we're going to go ahead and buy 20 teas, which I totally forgot to do, by the way, because we need empty cups in order to actually make hot cups of Guthix Ress. While we're in Verac, we're also going to go down to the Verac Sewers and use our alts in order to get rid of that Venge cooldown by having three rotating Venge other accounts in order to kill the rat. Kind of like a recoil, but this is going to take me a while just to kill a fucking rat in the Verox sewers. I'm also using Heal Other at this point to kill this rat because I don't want to waste any food. Oh yeah, and why am I killing a rat? Because I need rat meat for Druidic Ritual, and Druidic Ritual is required for Jungle Potion, which is required for Shallow Village, which is required for One Small Favor, which is required to make a Guthix Rest. Did you get that? I hope so. So this guy next to me is probably like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Because I'm vinging a rat for like three minutes straight with like three alts that look the same. Either that or he's just not there because he's probably AFK splashing. He's probably not there. I'm, I'm just making up weird stories in my head again. Anyways, I need to also hit an actual one on this rat to get the drop. If you just do purely neutral damage on most NPCs, unless they're instanced like the ones in the feud, you're not going to be able to get the drop from these NPCs. Hit me, rat. Yes. A rat has been... Please give me the drop. Yes. I gotta pick up the bones too because I need three bones for, uh, what is it, Shiloh Village quest to get through the door. Alright, so we got the rat meat. Now we're going to head southeast of Verak in order to kill a bear because we also need bear meat for Druidic Ritual. Same method here, but the bear's a little bit quicker. Well, actually not really because he hits more, but he has more HP. So he's actually slower. Sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. The bear took a while as well. We killed the bear with three alts, venging, rotating, doing all that good stuff between cooldowns of vengeance. So... I'm then going to tell the other to Camelot from here. I'm running to Murder Mystery. We're going to use Stamina Pot Shares to get Murder Mystery done as fast as possible with Stamina and a lot of run energy near the Sears Village area. That's because Murder Mystery gets us from 1 to 11 crafting as quick as possible and we need 10 crafting to string bowstrings as well as we need 20 crafting to do Shiloh Village which is required to start one small favor which is required to sip that Guthix Rest to put us at 15 over 10 HP as well as make that Guthix Rest. From Sears Village, I'm going to Stamina Pot share some more, run all the way to the Gnome Stronghold to get 10 Agility from one because I'll need 10 Agility for the Draenor course. And then I'm going to go ahead and run down south to get 20 crafting at the Flax Spinner and the Flax Spawns in the southeastern area of the Gnome Stronghold. At this 20 crafting, took us about 13 minutes, I believe, maybe 14. So not bad, not bad. After this, I'm going to Stamina Pot share, run to Artie, buy some more supplies like vials of water, three wool, and then I'm going to go to the Thieving Cake Stall. And then I'm going to thieve from 5 to 30 thieving because once again, 30 thieving is a requirement for the feud. On this run, I decided to go at 20 thieving to the silk spawn. I used my other three accounts to actually block my account away from the guards rather than luring them into the house just because they were nearby anyways. And someone told me that thieving silk was actually quicker XP at 20 instead of cakes. Later did I find out this was wrong, but I could have saved some time on this run definitely here by staying at Cakes the entire time to 30 thieving. It was definitely that person who told me that I should switch to Silk's fault, not my own, that I made this mistake. Definitely. I just realized I think the game still thinks I'm on Tutorial Island even with the items I drop. Typically on Tutorial Island when you drop an item, I thought that was specific to the items, but the Silk, as you can see, are disappearing at only 5, meaning... I think the 30 second drop rule on Tutorial Island is applying to my character now on the mainland. Kind of interesting, I did not notice that till just now. Like I said, this is a test run, it's our first run. It's still stressful though, we've already made some mistakes as you can see. So I'm going to use the boat and Artie to go back to Remington, follow my account and give it some more stamina potion shares. Use a pickaxe I picked up earlier to get some clay, grab some onions on my way to Draenor, go to the cooking shop, get some raw food for Druidic Ritual, Lumbridge tell the other then, start Prince Alley Rescue, buy a chisel at the crafting store, buy bronze bars at Shantae Pass, and four rope, because I will need the bronze bars for four smithing in order to actually craft a bronze wire, which is required for Shiloh Village, 
So the hard part about this is I'm going to have to rely on people not out buying my world because once again I cannot use world hop mechanics on this Iron Man. If I world hop, that means I log out and I lose accept aid. So I'm going to have to just check this shop every now and then and hopefully get enough bronze bars to get me to four smithing. After this I'm going to lumbridge tell the other and smith those bronze bars at that rusty anvil because it can smith bronze bars and bronze bars only. From here I'm going to then head to Draenor with more stamina potion shares. The restock timer on these wines is awful. I think it's like one wine every 15 minutes so once again world hops are killing me here. I need wines for some of the more dangerous portions of Shiloh Village where the NPCs can hit up to like eight or nine I believe and I need a one eat food that's high but I'm going to be spending some time getting some agility here so I can buy some of those wines between my agility runs hopefully. I'm only going to 20 agility here at the Draenor course, then I'm switching over to the Alcarid course. I was once again told this by a friend that the Alcarid course is quicker than the Draenor course for agility once you hit 20. And once again, this friend was wrong. This definitely wasn't my fault for listening to them, um, you know, but uh, <laughs> it was my fault. Okay, I, I admit, I take fault. I need the agility, by the way, you might be asking yourself this. I need 29 agility because I'm going to agility potion share from 29 to 32 in the Shiloh Village quest. There's a crevice you must climb down in Shiloh Village which requires 32 agility to get down. There's actually two of them. So we're going to agility pot share and use that accept aid feature there to literally boost our agility. So went back to Lumbridge at some point in this run, went to Alcarid, bought some more bronze bars, eventually got four smithing at the Lumbridge Rusty Anvil. From here, I went ahead and started the Squirk mini quest, mini game, whatever you want to call it, activity where I used the Winter Garden to get a couple inventories of herbs that were clean. I dropped it to Roman because I did not need those to make Guthix rest once I'm 18 herb lore as well. I had to actually start the mini quest here on the alt accounts because they didn't even have it started. I was very much not prepared for this at all and trying to manage all these clients while getting them all through the dialogue of the tutor really wasted a lot of time. After these two inventories of herbs which took even more time because I don't have a fake log. I can't fake log because if I fake log then I can't unfake log without logging out and re-logging back in and losing my accept aid. I need to unfake log to talk to NPCs in quests and attack them because you can't do that while you're fake logged. So we've got our inventories of herbs in the bank. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell the other to Falador and start and finish Druidic Ritual Quest. And we actually were just right next to some bone spawns that we needed for Shiloh Village. You need to put three bones in the door. So I went ahead and picked up these bone spawns right next to the weird meat you make in the cauldron for Druidic Ritual. I went ahead and used some Camelot Tally Others here in order to run all the way to Artie Boat for some reason and then use that to Brimhaven. I could have probably used Falador Tally Others and then taken the shortcut with agility since I have a lot of agility now then ran to the Remington boat which would have saved probably a lot of time because I took a lot of trips during Jungle Potion Shiloh Village back to the bank and teleported out with the Chronicle a few times here. The clock was literally ticking down but luckily on some of those Jungle Potion herbs that sometimes take up to like 15 minutes to find, I found them pretty instantaneously. So yeah, we got Jungle Potion done and now we could finally start Shiloh Village. Now, in order to do Shiloh Village, once again I used wines between a lot of the monster hits because I cannot maintain a lot of clients and heal others as well. Heal other is delayed so it is possible to get heal othered and die still even with your hp over zero i know it's weird but check out this clip here you'll know what i mean as you can see i was not really prepared at all for shiloh village besides having some wines i did not have many and i couldn't hop worlds to get any more there's probably some better places i could have bought them with a faster respawn rate and less people buying them but i just didn't take the time to think any of this through and I ran as fast as possible to where I was going. I went to the general store in order to get an anti-poison in case one of the tribesmen on my way inside Jungle Potion or Shiloh Village were to hit me. I could actually tick a 10 instantly and kill my account with that poison. So I wanted to make sure I was anti-poisoned when walking around these tribesmen at all times. Unfortunately, there was this very inconsiderate man doing Twibo and a Trio cleanup activity right next to me in my world and he was just summoning these Brudu victims and not killing them and instead you could see they were attacking me and almost even killed me a couple times during Jungle Potion in Shiloh Village. Luckily they don't max 10s but it was a very scary experience. It wasted a lot of my wines and I could not hop to a world without these Brudu victims because once again I cannot log out. I fucking hate this weird messed up mode of not being able to log out especially whenever I need to use the restroom and I'm literally holding my piss this long. The clock was ticking down so quickly at this point. All that wasted time on agility and thieving and all these poorly planned routes. I really needed some way to make up some time. So I had my good friend Mahler come over on an alt account that had a bone key and beads of the dead on it because I totally forgot that on all the alts. And I needed one of those accounts to follow me into the last Shiloh Village dungeon, which is very scary indeed. He went ahead and routed me to the door and he even helped me kill the boss because you can kill Nazistrul in all three forms without ever dealing damage to it 
as an Iron Man even, and that's because it's one of those weird instance bosses that's in a multi-combat area that can still be attacked by other people. Basically, the method here to speed up the kill on Nazistrul, I could have had three accounts down there avenging me and killing it that way because he only ever maxes nine in any of his forms, but this would have taken literally forever. Instead, there was a way to do this much quicker with Mauler here, and he showed me how. He basically said, all you gotta do is get a Venom off on each of the forms, then hit a zero as the last hit on the form, and then it'll swap to the new form and you continue this process again and again. It's kind of like the old Venom Alt Slayer method where you just hit a zero and you get half the Slayer XP at the end. As long as I did the last real hit of damage, which is a zero, then I would get the KC from the Nazistrul and finally be able to pick up that corpse and turn it in at the very end quest completion. But not before having to boost my agility again through the boost potion share in order to get down the last crevice and then turn that corpse in. To the actual ghost or whatever it is that gives you the quest completion okay i have all the herbs banked i have all these quests done we have about an hour and i can finally get to the introductory part of one small favor to make those guthix rests i'll need for the feud quest that's until i realized i'm only 10 herbore fuck jungle potion and druidic ritual gets you some xp but it's not enough to get you to 10 x marks the spot gets you to 10 which is a requirement for dig site and that's the only way we're going to do this. Dig site gets me from 10 to 17. And then maybe I can use a Greenman's Ale from the pub in Yanil in order to boost from 17 to 18 and make the Guthix rest. That's literally the only way I can get my herb lore in time here. So it's a stretch, but let's do it. I've already forgotten to buy the charcoal to make the ground charcoal inside Dig site quest whenever I pass by the shop while doing Shallow Village and while doing Jungle Potion. So we're going to have to search literally the specimen tray here for a fucking charcoal, which is going to possibly take an extra five minutes. As well, whenever I'm trying to dig up this fucking talisman right here, it's not its not appearing. This is all RNG here. I could dig it up first try, I could dig it up in an hour. And it seems like during this run, it took a few minutes. Finally, dig site is done, and we can go ahead and start one small favor, and hopefully at some point get a Greenman's Ale from Yunel. Alright, so we'll figure out the Greenman's Ale somehow, sometime. We only have a few minutes left. There's no... I don't think this is possible, but we're going to see how far we can get, okay? This is just the first run. Keep this in mind. But it's setting a timeline, a thought process of what we're going to actually be doing next. So I'm going to go ahead and start one small favor here. And... Yeah. I can't start it. I forgot something. I've just totally forgot something entirely here. And that was Rune Mysteries quest. I didn't even start or do a Ruin Mysteries quest. I forgot it was even a requirement for one small favor. So we've only got like 15 minutes left. I'm just going to let the timer run out. That There's no way I can go do a Ruin Mysteries quest. Get a Green Man's Ale from Yanil. Then do one small favor all the way up to this point. And then I still have to do the actual feud quest. There's no way I can do all of this. So I'm just letting the timer run out. And I'm going to re-log and... Hopefully, uh, see maybe a six hour log maybe doesn't turn my accept date off on real log. Who knows? I was even maybe hoping that like I'm in, I'm in such a fucked up state right now with the tutorial still thinking it's going that maybe you can't get six hour in tutorial and maybe I can't get six hour logged or something fascinating like that. But no, I got six hour log. We're going to have to start this whole process over, make another hardcore Iron Man, make another account member, use another one of my precious member codes and rethink the route here. Go at it again. Okay, so my head is killing me, my bladder's killing me, my colon's killing me, but we're gonna try this again. Anyways, the only differences in this route are going to be a few, but they're going to be very important. My first change in the route comes on Tutorial Island itself. I decided to get three mining and therefore three smithing on this tutorial, so I only have one level to actually get inside the main game, and I don't have to rely on people not buying out the bronze bars inside of the Shanty Pass shop. I can actually just get enough bronze bars for a singular level this time, and one bronze wire rather than four whole levels. And I could only get up to level three because Tutorial Island is obviously capped at level three stats. This was also great because it added no time to the run at all because I could re-log before turning an accept date on and becoming an Iron Man and teleothering off the island. I also decided on the second run I would not need to go to the stronghold at all, therefore I wouldn't have to waste time running through those doors, and that's because the 2000 coins from Murder Mystery was sufficient enough to buy everything I needed as well as do the feud quest. Next, I'm actually going to start Rune Mysteries during the whole route, and every time I go to Draenor, I'll continue the quest. Every time I go to Varrock, I'll continue the quest, because I need to go to those two places several times anyways. Also, I realize there's a rat right next to the bear in Varrock, so I don't actually need to go into the Varrock sewers to kill a rat. I can kill it right next to the bear, and I am just fine. As well, I think this rat hits a little bit higher, so I can kill it quicker, because it's a higher level, maybe. 
I don't know. I even made sure to buy charcoal this time whenever running into Shiloh Village quest or Jungle Potion quest because I needed the charcoal further down the line for the dig site quest. And I know this time that I needed to do the dig site quest as well as I knew this time that I needed to actually buy Green Menzel. So I took a trip to Yanil early and tried to route this all perfectly. Speaking of routes, during the Shiloh Village quest, I actually teleported back to Falador and used that agility shortcut we talked about earlier, rather than using the long route from Camelot all the way to the Artie boat, then to Brimhaven. I saved a lot of time by this time getting a friend to lend me a Dream Mentor account so I could actually use the Spellbook Swap spell to use one singular account for both Tele others, boost potion share, vengeance, all of that. This meant while speedrunning, I only needed to really control two accounts for most of the entire speedrun, and I could therefore focus a lot more and get a lot of clicks in at a quicker rate without missing as many ticks. Whenever I actually needed vengeance though and heal others, I could log on to my other accounts that were already prepared in spots, such as the agility potion boost spot for Shiloh Village and the rat and bear I'd need to kill for Druidic Ritual. The largest by far though time savers in this second attempt were the following. Getting my agility entirely at Draenor instead of switching to Alcarid and wasting a bunch of time and getting my thieving to 30 this time solely on the cake stall and not the silk stall. It all though was still cutting very close. It looked like it was possible though. I was only at 4 hours and 32 minutes when starting one small favor. Keep in mind I haven't done dig site quest, that's in the route. But that should not take too long and we have an hour and a half to do dig site quest as well as do the feud as well as just do a very small portion of this one small favor quest because we're on the very front end of the quest. During the quest, whenever you have to get the Guthix Rest, it's very early on and there should be no real item or skill requirements to get up to this point because you're just talking to a bunch of people. You're not yet fighting NPCs like the Slaglith. You're not yet making bird cages or using items or making the weather vane. This should be a breeze from here and an hour and a half should really be enough time to do the last three tasks we need. Here's where we fucked up though. We really messed up here. We somehow need three steel bars to give to this guy. Early on in the quest, on the route all the way to the, the front of one small favor. I did not know this. I thought all the required items were on the way back because that's when you actually start making things like the weather vane and actually killing things like Slagolith. I didn't think I needed any items to actually do this part of the quest. And it doesn't make sense even because apparently you give this guy the steel bars and he doesn't even give you back the pigeon cages yet. He's just like, okay, yeah, I'll fix them when I get around to it, whenever you come back. That's whenever you get your reward for giving him the steel bars is at the other end of the quest. So he just takes your steel bars and tells you to fuck off, basically. I didn't like this at all, because this meant I was going to have to somehow get steel bars. Quick. Very fucking quick. Where can you get steel bars? Basically nowhere. Well, you could go do Daddy's Home Mini Quest really quick somehow, and then possibly get the reward from that, which includes some steel bars. But I couldn't even do that because Daddy's Home has a cutscene. You remember what cutscenes does to this account? It turns off accept aid! There was a steel bar spawn in the Brimhaven dungeon which requires woodcutting and agility and running through tons of mobs that could otherwise kill me as well as running through dragons without an anti-fire shield to get to a task only area with a steel bar singular spawn that I can't even world hop to get another one for and then I have to wait probably 10 minutes for another one and another one and another one. So yeah, that's off the table. What other ways can I get a steel bar? Well, I guess I'm going to have to fucking make one. I'm literally going to have to go do Knight's Sword Quest because Knight's Sword Quest will get me from 1 to 29 smithing. And I only need 30 smithing, of course, to make steel bars. But the Knight's Sword Quest has a lot of ridiculous item and skill requirements basically for some of these items. I need iron bars. The only way to do that is go to the wilderness. So I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna run there on my hardcore Iron Man as fast as possible. Pick up an iron bar spawn. Oh yeah, then wait another five minutes for the next iron bar spawn to pop up because I can't hop worlds and that's how long it takes. And then somehow rush 10 cooking in order to get a red berry pie. Here I decided to use the fishing shop in Port Serum as fast as I could, thinking on my toes, buying the 200 sardine stock and then using that on the fire made by one of my alt accounts and going back and forth, finally getting yes, 10 cooking. I did do it. Then luckily I made the red berry pie first try, didn't burn it. I was able to complete Knight's Sword Quest, then went to Falador, bought a Dwarven Stout to boost from 29 to 30 smithing. Then I went ahead and mined some fucking coal where there's like scorpions attacking my account and shit. Tried to mine some coal with my dirt poor mining level from Dig Site Quest. And then finally pulled the coal and the iron and then, watch this, made three steel bars. By this time though, we had like 10 fucking minutes to do everything else, including the feud quest. So we got that done, and we got all the way to the druid. Figured out how to make ethics rests, 
And that's about it. We weren't able to do the feud quest. Well, we started it, and I got about two steps in, and then I got six hour locked. So, is this even possible? With the steel bars added, I could have routed it a little bit better. I could have done some things to save, cut maybe 15 minutes off the time max. And then we would have had to rush the feud quest and kill both of those bosses in the feud quest. First try, very quickly, do everything perfectly. And maybe, just maybe, I could actually kill the feud bosses and get the feud done on this level 3 with like seconds to spare. And I'm already, my head is already killing me, I'm getting too old for this shit, man. I don't want to have to do this again. I don't want to have to sit here for six hours on my ass and not even be able to stand up and possibly get a blood clot shoot up to my fucking brain. No, I gotta figure out a better way to do this that takes less than six hours that's cutting it that close because that is not even for sure because that is a terrible way to play the game. I'm not doing this again. There's gotta be a better way. There's gotta be something I can think of to minimize time, cut it way down, and possibly overcome that 10 max hit from the second boss in the feud quest without even needing Guthix Rest. While there was no other option to boost my HP, you couldn't get bruised this quickly on a level 3 account at least. You could possibly if you had prayer and you went to Theater of Blood and leech some bruise off some other people, but I didn't want prayer, I wanted to be a level 3 of course, so we couldn't do that. There's no other way to boost my HP past 10 really in this amount of time, so there's gonna have to be a way to melee ticket the 10 from the boss. But melee ticketing's long gone. Interfaces no longer stop melee ticketing, you know, the only way to do it is to possibly regen and stall. During the stall, yes, your HP is regenerated, but we only have five minutes to kill each of these bosses, so I can't sit there and wait for my HP to regen and do a stall for every single one damage this guy does to me. No, that's going to take like five hours, not five minutes to kill the second boss. We need to find a method to tick eat melee somehow, or tick heal melee somehow, and somehow yet do it quickly in under five minutes. Here's where I had to put my brain into overdrive, and you'll see what I found next, which is just ridiculous, and will probably be never used again by another person in this game. So I went for about an hour to the outpost, testing some theories I might have for tick healing melee at a very fast rate, rather than waiting for my regen to start. And this was with heal other. Now like I showed before, you can die very easily mistiming a heal other with an NPC, or even timing it perfectly. So if I was able to do this, it would have to be a process that was tick perfect. And basically what I found out is, if you find a stall that's short enough, and you go into the melee range of an NPC, and then perfectly time your heal other, or actually it will have to be a group heal other in this case, which has a 90 second cooldown, because normal heal other cannot be used on a person inside combat. As well, you're going to have to find a stall that's not too long, because you'll get double hit before you can even walk back. And that's the problem, we have to find an accessible stall that can be easily achieved by a hardcore Iron Man that's level 3 in a very short amount of time. And one that I found was the Cabbage Cape, I've used this in many other videos, but it was a little bit too long. But I found one way to use longer stalls. If I was to actually go out first and hit the NPC, stalling the NPC from hitting me back like a flinch, for a few ticks, then use this cape stall, it was just short enough to then be able to walk back to the safe zone and only take one hit, as well as then timing perfectly a group heal on my other account, and when I say tick perfectly, I mean it. If you're a single tick too late or too early, the heal other is either going to overshot your HP and kill you anyways, or heal you to full, then the boss can max hit on you. So there you have it, a new mechanic, the tick heal other group, whatever you want to call it but it's not going to be easy at all to pull off. So that's the plan, because we have five minutes to kill this boss, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to need to stay as high as HP as possible, but not full HP. And if we get to full HP, we're basically fucked, because we can't actually sit there with a 10 and risk getting hit a 10 by the bandit champion. So here is another flaw in the theory, we're going to need to find an item that's self-inflicting damage that we can get on a level 3 hardcore very quickly, and that we can get without cutscenes. Why I say without cutscenes is because rock cake would be very accessible, but Recipe for Disaster at the start has like a 5 minute cutscene that's going to turn our accept aid feature off. Luckily, the only item there is with no cutscene that's easily accessible to a level 3 hardcore Iron Man is that of Nitroglycerin. Dig site, yes again. But we don't need any skills to start dig site and get up to the step where we can access this Nitroglycerin. We just need to get past the first exam, meaning all we really need to get is an opal, along with leather gloves, 
Then we can go ahead and use the trowel we're given from our acceptance of the exam number one in order to pop open the barrel along with some empty vials to then put the unidentified liquid in. And no, you don't even need to identify this liquid for it to work. So there we go. There's how we get our self-inflicting damage item very quickly and it's practically the only one we can get on this account in this time limit with the constraints we're given. So this method is a lot more tricky to pull off, but technically it should take a lot less time. Besides just getting the nitroglycerin, all we're going to have to do then is get the 30 thieving requirement for the feud, which takes about an hour, and then head on over and start the quest. As well as complete the quest, obviously, but we'll get to that. This method though is a lot more risky as everything has to be tick perfect on all the accounts. And when I say all the accounts, I mean, I'm going to need six heal group alts. Because the Vengeance 30 second cooldown isn't the problem, it's the 90 second cooldown they added to the group heal spell. This thing takes forever to cool down, and without 6 accounts or even more, it's going to be virtually impossible to kill the bandit champion in the 5 minute allotted time period. Yes, even with 5 accounts, I had Mauler test this, and he could not get close to getting it done. 6 accounts with this high magic level and lunar spellbook is the bare minimum requirement to actually do this. Luckily, I have a lot of good friends, so we're covered there. So it was time to test out the new plan. I once again paid for a new membership to tell the other off Tutorial Island, then thieve some into 5 thieving, use the count check teleport to get some GP I would need for transportation as well as for the feud quest, then finally, Camelot tell the and ran all the way to Artie using stamina boost shares. After this, I tell the back to Lumbridge, went ahead and ran to Draenor with more stamina shares, and then bought a hand fan. I'm gonna need this hand fan because, as you saw, I'm going to have to attack the second NPC first to flinch it in order to stall its attack. So I don't want XP, therefore I'm using the hand fan because of its negative 100 attack bonuses to hit the least amount possible on the boss whenever I actually do have to attack this NPC. And that means I'm going to try and get zero XP on this account. Speaking of that, I even managed to mitigate some of the XP from Tutorial Island using an alt account. You can do this by using a range account to shoot the rats twice, then do the last hit of damage after that first account is logged out. That'll grant you the kill count with only a third of the XP it takes to kill the rat. So that puts this account at 4 combat XP, 4 range XP, and actually 0 magic XP because I was able to skip the magic part entirely using that tell the other. This is going to be a perfect hardcore Iron Man with one of the rarest quests done and it's going to have minimal XP, trust me. I also decided to buy the cabbage cape because, well, that's the stall I'm going to need in order to actually pull off this crazy manip method, whatever you want to call it, at the end of the second boss. Lastly, I bought a chronicle and some pages because I'm going to need that in order to get to the dig site quest area. So speaking of the chronicle, I used it, went to the Verrock clothes shop on my way to the dig site quest start, got the leather gloves I needed, then headed over and started dig site quest, did it up until the point where we're going to go ahead and use our trowel on the keg, as well, I banked some of the cakes earlier that I'll need for food in order to heal back up after the explosive potion puts me down from 10 to 1 HP. So I'm going to be using that along with these explosive potions. And I got the vials from the Artie shop earlier whenever I bought a vial of water pack and left clicked emptied some of those vials in order to put some of this liquid in. That's going to almost kill me every time I use it in game. Okay, so that's it. We're already ready to start the feud quests and I just need to buy a disguise from Ali Morrison, talk to him, then head over to Paul Vanich and try and finish that quest up. All right, so this is actually the first time I've gotten to the first boss in the feud quest and it is, just as I suspected, pretty easy. It's not terrible. I've only got four Vengeance accounts right now. That's because Vengeance only has a 30 second cooldown. I don't need heal group yet. And this is just going to be maxing sevens on me meaning I don't even always need to heal other before I step out, and that's because the only thing that kind of slows this boss fight down is I have to wait till my HP bar goes away to use heal other whenever I step back in. Other than that, the Vengeance is doing work with high or near max HP on this NPC, and I don't have to worry about Cabbage Cape stalling, I don't have to worry about waiting for heal group to get off the cooldown, I don't have to worry about really timing anything that perfectly. This first boss is kind of a breeze, even though I barely did kill it in time. And the only thing that made it kind of scary was the time limit because it had a little bit higher of an HP level than the next boss we'll have to fight. Okay, this is the final boss, the second boss. This is really scary because everything has to be tick perfect. I'm not using any friends for this. I'm on seven accounts, including the one now, as well as six alts. The hardest thing is gonna be to hit from one client to the other on the little tiny heal group spell in just the right amount of time and not misclick it as well as to click back on the tile correctly. It's really hard to go across different clients on a widescreen region like this, so I'm not looking forward to this, and that's another reason why friends can't help me at all, because this has to be all timed on one end perfectly. Even if I wanted their help, it, it wouldn't matter. It all has to be done by myself to time everything perfectly here, so that's what we're going to have to do. 
as well talking to this guy I took one hit I think it's inevitable I don't know I might I might find a way to get around that later but yeah I took one hit I, I chanced it he could have hit a 10 but he, he hit like a 7 on me so we've lucked out there we're gonna go ahead and try and start this boss round one Well, that's one way to waste a hardcore Iron Man and another membership code. So there's this thing kind of wrong with me, right? I have this innate need to not want to attack an NPC on a level 3 because I know I don't want combat XP. I know I don't want it. So why would I attack an NPC? Well, unfortunately, I need to attack the NPC here to get just the right timing for the Cabbage Cape or else I get stacked out as you just saw. So I'm going to have to overcome this terrible thought process because even on the last boss, I just had to step out each time. I did not have to attack the boss every time. And so I don't know how I'm going to remember this or how to train my brain to attack a boss on a level three, but I'm going to have to do it. So let's waste another membership code and another two hours of attempts to see if we can get this. We've got our explosive potions, our cake, all of that. We've got our six accounts ready to go. As well, we did find a somewhat sophisticated way of actually mitigating the first hit from the bandit champion by going through the entire dialogue with this bandit here and clicking off on the last dialogue. The next time you then talk to the bandit, he'll summon the champion, but he'll have one tick of delay and you'll have that exact tick to run to the safe spot over here by the building. So there's no need to take a 10 possible hit from this bandit champion. I swear to God, I'm not doing this on purpose. I forgot to attack the boss again and got stacked out instantly. I don't know how I, how I cannot remember this after it literally cost me two hours before, but I I just can't I can't overcome it. I'm going to have to going to have to try something else here or something i i need someone to yell attack in my ear while attack, i'm doing this the whole attack. time i think the main thing on that one was i saw my hp go up and it was about to hit 10 and once you're full hp you can't tick heal so i panicked and just went out in front of it instinctively without attacking before my hp regen to full and yeah that's what happens when you panic cool weird manip not bug here if you actually try and trade or do anything on this account it doesn't say iron man it skips the word iron man because i'm in some really bug tutorial state look at the chat box okay i've reorganized my desktops here one of my screens has one client and i'll drag in chronological order the other six clients with group heal one at a time to do the group heal manip to hit it easier okay so third time's a charm attack the boss attack the boss attack the boss let's do this Attack, 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 attack. Test your luck. Oh my god, I'm not in the heal group area range. It's a- I have to have line of sight. I didn't have line of sight on my character right there. I need to get a tile closer on these accounts. Holy shit, I'm so lucky. So I attacked it, but I did not actually place my heal group accounts in the right square, and the heal group spell didn't even work because I couldn't see my other account while I was attacking the bandit. That was extremely lucky. I'm gonna redo this one. I did it again. Under pressure every single time, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to step out instead of attack. I don't know what I need to remind myself. At least I got some attacks off this time and didn't die instantly. But I literally stepped out again and died the same exact way I did the last two times. There's something wrong with my brain. New account time, new membership time. Okay, I've set a labeled tile here that says ATTACK in all caps, so hopefully I'll remember to actually attack the boss this time. And I keep calling my new RSNs like brain dead idiot because I'm so fucking stupid I keep attacking the boss. Something is literally wrong with my mind, so here we are. We're going to attack the boss, and we're going to get this done. Attack, attack.
See what I meant by spanning from client to client on a somewhat wide screen region? It's easy to misclick. I misclicked the tile back. I'm, I'm satisfied with that though. I didn't die to forgetting to attack the boss for once. I died a legitimate death that wasn't completely moronic. I just misclicked a tile. On to the next membership code anyways. Round five went better than expected, but I was late on my group heal by one tick. And when you miss a tick, you lose hardcore status and accept aid and have to start over again. Another day, another two hours has passed and here we are. I think this is the one. As long as I can remember to attack and click the right squares here. I was not quick enough with my dragging down the clients, but I am getting used to how this fight is going to be played out. It would be much better if I didn't have to spend two hours in a membership code every time just to practice this tiny little fight here, but I think I know what I'm doing finally. I'm a very slow learner, but once I got something down, I got it down, baby. Let's do this again, and let's try and do it a little bit quicker. God, finally and a free Addy scimitar on the ground that was that was cutting it close I, I, that felt like it was over five minutes but obviously when you're in this mindset trying to get things done as fast as possible who knows what the real time is that was very close we did not use hardly any explosives on this round almost no cakes as well we had a lot of inventory left I was really surprised plenty of inventory to spare I think we got a little bit lucky with his hits he had some high hits so we had some high bench hits to replace those high hits with and kill him in just the amount of time we needed I'll tell you what the methods and everything put in today's video and the obscurity of it is one of the most abstract things I've ever done on this game and probably one of the most abstract videos I've ever made. The concepts are just really wild in this video. I have to get everything done before a six hour login limit. I can't get logged out. I can't world hop. I can't go in cutscenes of all things. I'm getting Telly othered off Tutorial Island to do this and then I'm making a hardcore and then using this weird cabbage cape stall manip to to somehow t group tick heal with six other accounts to then kill this boss it sounds at first when you explain yeah i just did the level three hardcore iron man feud quest that it's nothing but i'm going to tell you what this was an awful terrible quest to do and i'm glad i never have to do it again at least for now i'll talk to you guys again soon thanks for subscribing to the channel if you like the content and see you next time <laughs>